Here we go, episode 98 of the Hardline Sports Talk. Michael Merlo and John Michael Masiri here with you, JM. We're getting to a point now where sports, you know, sport, it's kind of low. It's kind of soft, not really uh, big-time sports news, but we're getting there. We're mm-hmm. getting to the, you know, real meat and bones of baseball and the start of football. We're inching up. Well, Getting I think a little excited. I think once the finals ends. By the way, I'm doing great. Thank you for well, asking. I was going yeah, to. No, no, I'm doing sorry. great. I'm having a great day. Really great week. It's gone. You great. know, you never ask me how I'm doing. Thanks I always got to ask you me. how you're doing. Um, no, but I think you know once we get past the finals, then we're gonna start creeping into territory up until the All Star break of baseball, where we're like, all right. Not much going on because I think we you know, all star break comes up. Now you're talking, you know, uh, uh, training camp and you're getting into preseason with NFL. So, you know, stuff starts getting exciting there, but it's a little dead area coming up. I get, I get excited that middle of baseball and then you just see everybody practicing, getting ready to go for football. I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. At least obviously you have the Stanley cup finals and the NBA finals, but, uh, you know, for all the fights. Baseball and football. What training what camp? Fight? Can't wait for all those stupid joint practice fights. For no, you know, reason. this is a debate for another day. But they should just like completely get rid of preseason and just have joint practices. Yeah, honestly, you're not wrong. I don't hate that idea. We may have spoke about this before, but we played football. We had joint practices before yeah. we played a game. And yeah, high school football is obviously different, but those joint practices, I think, really got us ready. Yeah. I mean, it's full contact or close to full contact or whatever they yeah. want to do. But I mean, you're not hitting the quarterback, but everybody else is banging. Right. You know, it's right. it's all good. Yeah. And what's the point? You know, is the quarterback really getting ready to start taking sacks and stuff like that in the preseason? He's really getting his body into shape there. Like, I don't think that no. really makes a difference. No. But anyway, we're not talking football. We're going to talk a little football, a little some veterans football. on the move. But we are going to start in the NBA um, Wednesday night. The Denver Nuggets took a 2-1 series lead over the Heat, who stormed back and scored 36 points in Game 2 in the fourth quarter and uh, stole a victory in Denver, which they needed to do, but lose the first one at home. Denver up 2-1. Jokic had a 30-point triple-double, 20 rebounds. Uh, Jamal Murray, a 30-point triple-double. Very impressive performances. From the Nuggets, two stars. JM, let me ask you, do you think the Heat are done? Yes. Um, I mean, you know, never count this team out. I don't want to say they're done. Like, I think they've been done since the beginning of the series. I just think the Nuggets are going to win the series. Now, can the Heat win another game? Yeah, of course. Um, So I wouldn't say that game three exactly, like, put the dagger in them, but the reason why I'm saying they're done is, like I said, I just think that they're they're outmatched in this series. The star power is too strong in Denver. Jokic is, I think at this point, I don't care who's healthy, who's not healthy. If you're denied that Jokic is the best player in the league, like it's kind of just ignorance at this point. I think it's so clearly obvious that he's the best player in the NBA right now, and I really can't see an argument against it. Um, But between the way Murray's played, you know, this whole postseason, the, the, his whole postseason career, um, Yoga's played fantastic, obviously, and guys have played well. He's, you know, I'm not going to call uh, Michael Porter Jr. a role player. He's not. He's a starting caliber player, a very good player in this league. But these guys are playing to their roles perfectly. Aaron Gordon's been a really good player for this team. Yeah. So, you know, I think Miami's obviously not to put down this amazing run that they've gone on. I think it's extremely impressive to be an eight seed and not only – be in the finals, but the teams that they've taken down also have, have have not been any pushovers. I mean, you talk about the team who won the Eastern Conference Finals last year in the Celtics, a Knicks team that was very good this year, and obviously the number one seed, the team with, if you don't think it's Jokic, the other best player in the NBA, Giannis Antetokounmpo. So hats off to them. And I know I'm talking like the series is over, and you know the, the, who knows a week from now what it's going to look like, but if I had to take my best guess and. I think the Nuggets are uh, winning their first championship. Yeah, and uh, if the Nuggets are to win game four and, you know, the Heat go down 3-1, that's pretty difficult to overcome, especially when you're not the better team, especially on paper. Uh, One thing that I saw a couple of days ago, and I want to get your opinion on it, was, and I forget who said it exactly, but 
they were speaking about making Jokic a scorer and not like a facilitator. Did you see this? Yes. Yes. And I don't know what to make of it because I don't think Jokic is like either. I think he's just like a big mixture of one elite right. player. Right. Like I think there are nights where we spoke about this when we would talk about LeBron. Like LeBron could be, you know, the distributor one night or he could just take over the game and score 40 whenever he wants. Right. You know, I think Jokic is kind of like that player. He will yeah. choose. He will dictate what player he wants to be on any certain night yes. and he will be successful doing it. Yeah. I think I understand, you know, that strategy um, of trying to make Jokic a scorer and not a facilitator. I mean, like you said, he really just does everything. Um Listen, at the end of the day, the guy's amazing. You could try to do whatever you whatever you can to to contain him. It clearly hasn't been working. He dropped 40 points game one. He dropped 30, 20, and 10 in, uh, in game three. Um, or no, sorry, he dropped 40 in game two. I think that was. And then game three, he had the 30, 20, and 10. Um, but Jamal Murray's no pushover player. And, you know, I've seen debates on it. They might be right. This might be the best duo in the NBA. I mean, really? there, are, there are some... I don't know if I'm going to go there to say that they're definitely like in the top five. I mean, some that come to mind, obviously healthy LeBron and AD might take the cake there. You got Brown and Tatum, although Jalen Brown just had like a historic postseason, not in a good way. Um, Durant and Booker. So, yes, Durant and Booker. So there are some really good um, duos in the NBA, but I think when you speak to a duo that, is most in unison and most has the, the 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 way their game flows together. Jokic and Murray certainly make a case to be one of the best duos in the NBA. I mean, they are just absolutely fantastic. The pick and roll, it's the simplest play in the NBA. <laughs> and it, they they make it unstoppable. They literally make the pick and roll unstoppable and you know, I know we talk about Steph Curry and we talk about LeBron, we talk about guys like that that you know, change the game in a huge way. You know, like the way the the way their style of play, and we've never seen this with LeBron, a guy this big who could move this way, and Steph Curry, we've never seen a guy pulling up from forty feet, being able to consistently hit that shot. Nikola Jokic is in that category of holy crap, I've never seen that before. You got a guy who's seven foot, and I'm sorry, but not the most athletic looking guy ever. No, I but I think the difference, especially with Curry, is that like Curry completely changed the game where. Now other players, and there's more players like Steph Curry, the smaller yes. guy, and then also everybody else just started taking three pointers. But now I, I think I think you really think you're going to see a bunch of players like Jokic, like bigger guys playing center and being facilitators. I, not everybody can do that. I'm not, and I'm not even trying to talk about the faci the facilitating is part of it. When I'm saying I've never seen this before, but his ability to finish at the rim, and it's I laugh when I watch this guy because he's like contorting his body in all these weird ways and it's like that looks like an awful shot and he just it goes in and you're yeah. like how that how is this even possible like that's a terrible shot but he just finds a way to put some english on it and it goes right in so i do think though that maybe you know if you don't want to get player specific or it might have it might even be happening already we don't even realize it that these teams are going to make their centers fill some more roles and play a little bit of a facilitator role like we haven't seen before. It's been happening a little bit over the NBA over the, the past decade where these centers now, obviously, you look 10 years ago, you look 20 years ago, there were not as many centers who could be popping threes and all this stuff. That That's a new thing. I think it's going to keep evolving, and I don't know if that's, you could put that solely on Jokic. I think he's going to have some part to do with it, but I think that in some way, yes, he's going to have a lasting impact on the game and change the way the center position is played. I think that Curry actually changed the way the center position is played because you've gone away from the big man um, a lot lately. You're talking and, about reliance on the three-pointer, that's why? And the reliance on the three-pointer. Now you see more uh, centers shooting the three. I mean, Joel Embiid comes to mind. Obviously, he's one of the better um, centers in the league, just won the league MVP. Right. Um, so that's – I think Curry has had that effect. Now, a lot – you're going to watch Jokic and you're going to see how unbelievable Jokic is – but I don't know if you can kind of recreate it or I don't kind of come close to it. Right. I don't think that any player can change the style of the game that drastically, like the way Curry did it. But I do think that, like I said, I think Jokic is some teams are going to 
want more out of their centers now or, or be look to draft a, a center of more of the caliber like Jokic and, 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 and train these guys to be that way. Because listen, he's still pretty new to the league. I mean, he's not a rookie, obviously he's a veteran, he's an NBA veteran, but his, his emergence, you know, his first MVP was only a couple of years ago. So I think that we could see the effect from now until five years, you'll see guys start becoming more and more facilitators. But I do think that going back to Curry, Nobody's ever going to be able to change the way the game the way he did because you're always going to need guys who can rebound, like a guy like Mitchell Robinson, you know, or a, a Clint Capella or guys like that that right. aren't shooters, but they're great rim protectors and then they're great rebounders and stuff like that. Those guys are still going to have jobs. And I think that Jokic maybe fills into more of what LeBron is. Like nobody's asking their small forwards to play all five positions and do all this stuff. But I, like I said, I do think that there's going to be a little bit of an impact where teams might prefer a more athletic center now, or the way they run their offense, or, or who knows. I, I don't know. I just can think you run that, your offense through your center? Yeah, like Not, that's the question. If you have a these, really good center, I'm I mean, saying that's the question these teams are going to ask, especially right. when you know evaluating and drafting these right. guys. Hey, you know what? What was I just going to say? And it was a very good point. I completely forgot. But either well, way. The last thing I think yeah. with these centers though, it doesn't, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, but if you want a facilitating center, he's got to be able to shoot the three. Cause you know, think about it. if the magic said to Dwight Howard 15 years ago, Hey, we want you to facilitate more. Okay. I can't shoot threes though. So nobody's going to respect me around the perimeter and everything's going to get clogged. And there's not really any point of facilitating. So it's a luxury to have guys like this. That's what I wanted to say. Yes. Like, yes. you know, being able to find almost like a diamond in the rust where you have a center that you can run your offense through. It's a luxury. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens in the rest of this series because um, when is game four? I mean, they take years to play the next game. Uh, it's it's Friday, Friday night. Well, by the time this episode comes out, it'll be that night. Or they go? Did they go Sunday to Wednesday? It's, yeah, it's, I don't. I really don't joke. like the way they've done it's this. It's a joke. They did the Thursday four, to Sunday. Game, game one to game two was a three day break, but that wasn't a travel. There was no travel day. Obviously, they stayed in Denver, and then yeah. game two to game 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 three was a three day break because now they're traveling. But now game three to game four, two day break. It's a joke. It's a joke. Not a and I don't ah, whatever. Maybe because hold on. They gotta have is the game five scheduled for Sunday then? That's the only excuse I can imagine. No, so they have another travel day, so there's no Sunday game. Monday That's terrible. Night, game five. Yeah, no, That's yeah. Bad we want- scheduling. No Sunday game? Yeah, you know, we want nobody to compete with. There's no football, obviously. Unless they're trying to work around the NHL. Is does ESPN have NHL too? They might have the NHL. That's a good question. That um, might be the problem. I'm gonna check no, right now. TNT has NHL. And TV by the up. way, by the way, I mean Jesus Christ! And I keep seeing this meme everywhere. It's like down, like what a downgrade. And they show like the pre and post uh, cast of ESPN and the pre and post of you know TNT, the yeah. the uh, NBA night crew. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. It's just yeah. it's unbelievable. It's, it's bad. Yeah. Who? I digress. Let's I mean, not, dude. Get into- like, I know it's not the same people, but like ESPN, just in general, like. They're just a joke, man. Like the first take is oh my God. You see this thing the other day, Kendrick Perkins is like huffing and puffing in JJ Reddick's ear as he's in the middle of a point. That's a little weird. I didn't he's see like, that. JJ literally said to him, he's, he goes, Perk, is that you moaning <laughs> in my ear right now? He's like, it wasn't moaning. I, I was disgusted or something. I don't know. He's just Well, that shows a joke. You know what show I actually really don't mind? I don't mind get up. And I'm not the biggest ESPN guy. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't, I don't watch it honestly. I can't give my take, but they get they get some good guests. I like going back and watching some of the clips from early in the morning. Uh, but Pat is that, McAfee, like, is that like Greenberg and like Rex Ryan and Tannenbaum and those guys? Or well, so it's like a rotating cast of characters. Like football season Tannenbaum's on, and right. So it's always Mike Greenberg. It's his show, right? And then he'll have a bunch of different guys. The Monday after an NFL Sunday was always great. They had Orlovsky, yeah, Rex Ryan, uh, what's his name? Ryan is it Ryan Clark. Yeah, that's a good group. That's always entertaining. That is. But now I'm not really watching. I'm you know, right. I can really give a rat's ass right now. Right. But anyway, let's move on. Pat, Pat McAfee is going to be there. 
12 to 3. He's going to be doing his show on ESPN in the fall, so that's pretty cool, too. It's a little nice lineup. You're not a Pat McAfee guy? I am a Pat McAfee. Well, um, I wouldn't say I'm a Pat McAfee guy. I like I like the show. Like it's, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I don't watch it every day. I'm not in love with the show, but Neither I like I. the show. It's just, you know, I think what plays into his personality and those guys' personalities is, you know, how raw everything is. Never, nothing censored. Like, you know, they're, they're guys like, it feels like you're on a bar talking to guys about sports. And it's very laid back. I don't know how that's going to translate to ESPN. The elephant in the room, obviously, he can't curse. The so, only thing he can't say is the F word. Apparently, they're giving him a go on everything else. They'll pay whatever fine it is if he says the S word, or you could say you could say bitch. In some, you could say yes, bitch is allowed in a certain. I forget how you can say bitch. I can't like call you a B, but I could say like son of a bitch. It's okay. <laughs> the FCC or whoever they are, they're not. They're not regulating this episode. You know well, I, mean? I don't want to curse, and then you have to put like the expletive on oh, the episode. Yeah, yeah. True, true. But if I'm saying "bitch" in the correct terminology, yeah, then well, you you've said it. it already, like a lot. But but you could but you could say it in a certain way. I gotta uh, figure it out. You okay. could also say "damn," but you can't say "goddamn." Like if I say "goddamn," you have to right. now you have to do it. Right. Expletive. Okay. Well, anyway, it's just like on. you could say "ass," right? But you can't say like "dumbass." Yes, you exactly. Put, okay, got it. Yes, understood. Yes, S word never, really never good, especially on radio. Yeah, but yeah, when he explained it, he was like, "The only thing we can't say is the F word." I was like, "Okay, all right, do you?" Okay, Chris Paul uh, is going to be either released or traded from the Phoenix Suns uh, when it is okay to do that. You got any uh, landing spots for CP3? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think there are a couple ones that are. Always there, I feel like, when it comes to Chris Paul. The obvious one that everyone always talks about is LeBron. It's like, you know, yeah. the banana boat picture, LeBron, <laughs> Mello, what was LeBron, Mello, Wade, and Chris Paul. Chris Paul is the last one who hasn't played with LeBron. Um, I don't see it, really, with the Lakers. I, I really – I don't think they need him. Um, the Clippers, a possible reunion there, makes a little sense, but – I mean, how old is that team going to be? To me, <laughs> to me, when I'm looking at all the possible suitors, the one that probably makes the most sense to me is Boston yeah. because, you know, I feel like that team has really been missing a point guard. I don't care if that's shade towards Marcus Smart. I mean, like, get over it. It's kind of – he's a great player. He's a great defender, but he's not the best facilitator and point guard in the league by any means. Yeah. Um, So I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that, you know – it's a nice mix of youth and veterans over there. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, young and old. So that to me makes a makes more sense. And hey, Chris Paul, his whole life, you know, our whole career, he's been a big, big time choker. And what better place to go than well, the Boston Celtics? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, sure. That was definitely a wild comment. Okay. Um does he go is he gonna go to a spot and like can he be a six man or is he gonna go? He's gonna be the starting point guard. I think he's gonna be a starting player. I mean, I think he's still, you know, capable of being he's, a he's not he's not, starter. you know, prime Hornets or Chris Paul. Um, but he's definitely still a starting point guard in the league. Yeah, no doubt. We'll see I where mean, he ends up. If he's in Boston, like he's starting over Mark Smart. Right. What about Brogdon? If Brogdon doesn't uh... well, he was a six man of the year, so he, you know, played. Oh, so he comes off the bench. Yeah. Yeah. This hat and this shirt matches perfect. I was, you know, you, I mean, like that's, it is that's perfect. great. Perfect. You're doing some some things with that, man. Yeah, except I ripped I'm my impressed. shirt. I ripped my shirt today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ripped it on a on a door. Holy crap. That's a really big rip. And I scratched my arm doing it, and I have a burn. <laughs> so I'm I'm real. I'm hot right now. I'm I'm feeling good about myself. Just this keep right, that arm, right arm, like pinned to the side for now. This right, right arm is taking a beating the last couple of let's days. Not. L- listen, the last thing NBA I want to get. Yeah, to, you want to talk LeBron here, well, right? Yeah. You know, let's just knock it off. Like he's not going anywhere. Why no. are we acting like he's gonna leave? You he's think not leave, man? You think you don't think he's, he's going, not going to, to Dallas? Dallas? He's, you know he's not going, to, going Dallas? to Dallas. There is no way in hell that he's going to Dallas. Can we just see it happen? I, I you know, I want to see it at this point. I, I just, I want to see it happen. 
On those who want to stay and play with his boy AR-15. He's not going back for AD. If he goes back, it's not because of AD. He's going back I would for just, AR-15. Like I said, I don't think he's going to Dallas. I don't think there's any chance that he's going. But if he did, you know, we, we've there's been all these big threes and even, you know, let's think about that Celtics team. I mean, you could, that was probably a big four when they had Pierce, Garnett, Rondo, and Allen. But there's been all these big threes. And I think the best one probably assembled is the Heat one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they were the most su- successful. Yes. No. no. I mean, the, the Warriors too. The Warriors but, were. The Warriors I might be the I, best. I three. would no. I would take LeBron, Wade, and Bosh over Clay, KD, and Curry. Are you serious? Yes, I think that the drop off for number three is more significant. Like Clay's a Hall of Famer, but so is Chris Bosh, and I think that the drop off there. From Bosch compared to Thompson, like Bosch is a better player than Thompson. I don't know if that's okay. a hot take. I don't think it's a hot take, but you know, come at me if you want. Um, and I mean, Dwayne Wade, prime Dwayne Wade, guy won an MVP, guy won a ring by himself. He's not Curry though. Great player. He's a top thirty player all time though. He's not Curry though. He's not Curry. No. Um, but Curry beats him by a pretty good amount there. Yeah, I just I have to say something. Fran- Francisco Alvarez is is like the best. He, yeah, he might be the best guy as well. Um, um, you know, now that I'm, this is tough, I was just gonna say like LeBron, Luca, and Kyrie would be like really like close to. I mean, we don't. Luca's really <laughs> young. Like we're talking about these guys, Clay and you know the Heat and the Warriors, big three. Like you know, Clay's still playing, Curry's still playing, but they've put plenty on the resume already. Like Luca's young. We'll see what he's gonna become. But guy's already a top ten player in the NBA. Easily. Um, the question I would have is because we know LeBron can play with anybody, right? Yeah. And even Kyrie, when he was playing with LeBron, he was a very good sidekick. And, I mean, we can't really see what they did in Brooklyn. But on the court, Kyrie seems like he can fit well. He's a good teammate. He – you know, they – you know how like the Warriors are so great with just like letting Durant come in and like they were still able to move the ball and it looked pretty. Right. And they just played a great brand of basketball. I feel like Kyrie is kind of easy to play with in a basketball sense, like playing on the court, not off right. the court. He's the most difficult human being on planet Earth. Right. The one question I would have is how is Luca? Like, how does Luca fit into this? Is he gonna be, you know, sort of easy to play with in a big three? Because right. I don't really think he would be. Yeah, I mean, Luca definitely plays a ball-dominant style. Um, You know, that's one of the things where it could be too much firepower, you know? Yeah. How are these guys going to play together? Three guys who are really going to want the ball. I feel like LeBron would be the one, like, kind of taking a step back at that point. He would have to. He would would become the facilitator, or, you know, him and Kyrie would. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Oh, God. Okay? Yeah. Let's talk hypothetical. Oh, and by the way, when we were talking about big threes, Kobe, Nash, and Howard, I like, I thought was going to be like sick and they sucked. But anyway, yeah. um, let's rate. I want you to rank LeBron big threes, and we're going to include this hypothetical one. All right. So, Heat, Cavs with Kyrie and Love, and then. Potential Mavericks with Luca and Kyrie. It's tough. All right, I'm gonna go. The and Cavs. remember before, remember how good Kevin Love was, like no, when they I got. Know. Him. I know that's the problem because Bosch was like when they got Bosch. Bosch was an elite player in Toronto, yep. and then he came here, and like obviously his role was going to be less significant. Right. So it's difficult to judge Bosch because. He was like he was the third option. So yep. a lot of people who didn't know who Chris Bosch was, yep. including same. myself at the time, yeah. It was like he gets here. It's like, well, what the hell is Chris Bosch? Same same thing with wait, well, did you say a lot of people didn't know who Chris Bosch was? Well, I mean, I was a I was a kid, right? Like, you know, oh, I didn't okay, know yeah. the NBA very well. No, you should know so, ball when you're eight. So like no excuses. You hear about Chris Bosch, like this guy is an elite player right. from Toronto, and then he comes over and you know, again, hey, step for, back. Same thing happened with Love. He's he exactly was 26 a game his last year in Minnesota. Never averaged over 20 with the Cavs. 19 was his highest. Well, that really the question is do you think Kevin Love is better than Chris Bosch? That's the question. Well, what are you putting one? 
I think I'm going to put the hype. Of th- it's also like, keep in mind that LeBron now versus heat LeBron in 2017, 2016, 15, whatever has version of LeBron you want to pick is better than the current LeBron. Like current LeBron is still a top 10 player in the NBA. Not probably not top five. So best player in the NBA, LeBron, like prime LeBron is on these other two ones. I right. think, I think this is the worst one. I don't know if that's a crazy take, but I think that Mavs one is the worst. I, I'm going to say the Cavs one is the worst, and I'm going to go Heat one, and then... Oh, wait, you know what? But now I got myself thinking. I second-guess myself like crazy on this show. Um, I mean, Kyrie, like... Because Kyrie, I'm thinking Kyrie... <sighs> he's a crazy better, bastard, not, but I mean... Better? Now, Kyrie, yeah, I, I, yeah. That's the thing I'm trying to block out is I'm just a player on the court, Kyrie. He's one of the greatest scorers like we've ever watched. But who's so. better, the Kyrie now or the Kyrie that, you know, dropped 41 in the finals and hit the game-winning shot to win the Cavs the championship? Like, oh, this is so difficult. I think that Kyrie is probably an overall better player. But... Maybe this Kyrie could score more. Is he? Sh- I'm gonna look right now. Is he shooting more than he was back then? He probably is. Yeah, he is. He's shooting more than he was then. So this I'm gonna the say the though. younger oh, Kyrie yes. was better than this current Kyrie. He's a 47 percent three point. Oh no, sorry, that's field goal. I was gonna say that's no way. Okay, 39 percent from three. Um. Oh. It's it's a good it's a very good question. All right, how about the process of elimination? What's last? I think I think. All right, what's first? what's first? I think Miami, he, Miami's he, Miami's right. one. Miami's, Miami's first. One. That's the. Be- I mean, arguably the best LeBron. I mean, I I don't know. I, I, it's so even. Miami LeBron and then that Cleveland LeBron is so even. Like they're both just the best player, the do- most dominant player in the league. So I, I they're easy. Right, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going in in it's, it's reverse chronological order. Order. Miami, Cleveland, Dallas, because I think Dallas is really close. Because I'm like, oh, like Kyrie now versus Kevin Love. Like you know, Kyrie was is better than Love was in in terms of the rest of the league, but not by a wide margin. And that might even, I don't know, I'm trying to remember like where Kevin Love ranked in the league. But to me, it's just like, all right, what LeBron was better? And the 2018 Cavs LeBron that was on the greatest postseason run I've ever seen in my life, and he didn't even win the championship. He was just, you know, putting up a triple-double and 35 points every game. Um, I'll take that LeBron over the current LeBron, like, easily. So I, I think I think we're, like, just not talking about Luka, like, that much. Yeah. The dude averaged 32 points this year in 66 games. Last year, averaged 28, 9, and 8. The year before, 27, 8, and 7. I mean, 8 and 8, sorry. And he's 24. He's going to be 24 this year. So say what you want about Luka Doncic. Like, he's... All right, so what are you saying? I'm saying... I'm saying... Just hurry up. (laughs) We're wasting too much time on this. Miami, Dallas, Cleveland. All right. God, it's so close. It's close. Luca's my boy. I loved Luca, especially before this year. Yeah. Um, Luca fan. Crap. Did we have? Were we supposed to do uh, NFL before we went to break? Yeah, but we're gonna have to like. Just, oh, no, yeah. we got, all right, we got time. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, we're gonna we're Let's gonna play. start the NFL here. Um. You you got we'll wait for your little rant here about the quarterback list because I think we're gonna beef a little bit. Um I got you probably gonna have some disrespect about my boy. Problems. But let's start off here. Your Jets are like interested in everybody, and apparently Dalvin Cook is interested in you guys too. Mm, I don't know. Well, I don't I really want I think Dalvin that's Cook. I think it's a bad thing. I think if the Jets are interested in Dalvin Cook, it's a bad thing because yeah. they are not a hundred percent on Brees Hall coming back from injury. And by the way. I don't know why so much they have not, and we've argued about this. How many running backs have come back from tearing an ACL and been right back to where they were the year after? They're not. They, they don't come no. back right away. We only saw 
AP and Jamal Charles do it. Right. So well, the thing is, too, I don't how many running backs can this team carry, though? You got Brees Hall. You drafted a running back out of Pitt in the fourth round. You got Michael Carter, who I, I mean, is he a cut candidate at this point? Right. Um, you got Bam Knight. He's probably released then. But if you add Dalvin Cook to the mix, <laughs> Michael Carter's like the RB4. Yeah. And listen, I'm no Michael Carter fan. Like, he's pretty garbage. Like, I know some Jet fans like him. I think he's awful. Um, but I mean, you, you spent a third round, fourth round pick on the guy two years ago. He's had some product. He's had production in the NFL. Like, we're gonna. He was considered. I mean, I mean, you guys can. He was like considered like your RB two, like a big part of this team coming yeah. into the last season. Oh yeah, oh, so you're already gonna back. give up on him. He was the lead back. You know, Hall in the beginning was getting less touches. It yeah. So I I don't know, but it, it, it's not. A, I think it's not to a me, good thing. I think you're considering Cook. It's just weird with these veteran running backs. Like, I know Zeke is not as good as Cook is at this point in his career, but, like, Zeke's still unsigned. The Jets were rumored to be interested in Zeke. I think Cook's – it's a done deal. He's going to Miami. I think, like, you know, we, we shouldn't even be talking about See, it. See, and I don't think – and I don't think it is. I don't think it's a done deal. He's going to Miami. I don't know Buffalo's interest. If Buffalo's interest has wavered the past couple of days, he makes perfect sense in Buffalo. You know, Yeah. I think it makes more sense in Buffalo. They have Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert. Sure, Raheem Mostert has struggled to stay on the field basically his entire career. And Jeff Wilson, you know, isn't like this, you know, great running back, but he's a solid running back. So, sure, Cook can go there. I think the bigger problem is a game, but I think in Buffalo, the bigger problem is the O line. Like, I think they they don't need, I don't, I don't think the running back's going to solve their problems. They just can't. I I would concur that statement. And I mean, Dalvin Cook is a pass catcher, but he's not like a Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler. He's not just going to transform your passing game. No, he had like 300 yards receiving. They, you know, they've, they've, is single Terry really that bad of a pass catcher that Dalvin Cook's all of a sudden going to move the needle? I think he moves the needle, but I think he makes them better. And you know, we're going to talk about Hopkins too. He is linked to Buffalo. I don't know if this guy just has his choice of wherever he wants to go. Obviously, a team's got to offer him a contract and this and that, but he, if they're interested, he is out of his mind if he doesn't go to Kansas City. Like, go to Kansas City. I don't know why it's even, like, a thought to go anywhere else. If he has a contract offer from Kansas City, go to Kansas City. You've had awful quarterbacks your whole career except Watson when you guys were you guys were rarely together though and now you can play with a guy who might end up as the greatest quarterback to ever play this game in Kansas City who's already won two Super Bowl rings and you've never played in any big time games in your life you played in like a freaking wild card game your brother brought this up offline that he thinks that Hopkins is like the similar to the equivalent of a move of like Jones to Tennessee. And I disagree with him, but I don't think Hopkins like goes to Kansas City. I don't think Hopkins can be a number one receiver anymore, but I also think it's different if he goes to Kansas City. I don't know. I I don't know if That's... that changes things because of the offense and obviously it's Mahomes, but That's like, I don't steamy, think man. That's a steam. think so. Thing. We'll I don't. I don't think he's capable. Of I'm not going to kill you. I see. I see. I see the possible decline. Everything like that. The guy's old. He's had some injuries. You know, he had a good season last year when he came back, but he was also getting the ball shoved down his throat. I think you know, he change of scenery, change of offense. At that age, it's really hard to just come out and light the freaking league on fire. You said it about Kenny Galladay too, when the Giants signed him. You know, kind of lack of separation. He kind of has that. You know, not the greatest speed, not the greatest separation. I, I don't know. I don't know if I trust him to be a number one receiver in certain offenses. All right. So now, you know, we'll see what happens with Hopkins. I mean, again, I don't think he is like this real hot commodity. I think teams want him, but I don't think it's as badly as I think a lot of people seem. We'll see where he ends up, um, and we'll see the kind of season he has. But... You got some gripe with some of these quarterback lists coming out. It's June 8th. Again, like I mentioned before, I think we're all itching for football. But you uh, you seem like you got a little gripe with some of these quarterback lists. So what do you got? What do you come on? I just, it's, 
And so a list came out today. I don't know if you've ever heard. You've heard of these guys before. The Stay Hot podcast. It's got Theo nice. Ash. So came out with his top 10 quarterbacks. Now, I'm going to read the list off to you. And I'm sure you can imagine what problems I have with this top 10 list. And by the way, Daniel Jones, I don't want to hear his name. I don't want to hear him mentioned, okay? I don't want to even hear anything remotely having to do with the Giants when this list is read out because he's not on the list and he should not be anywhere near a top 10, okay? That's a, pro- that's a problem, man. All right, yeah. You, okay. All right, yeah, sure, read it out, yeah. All right, so I'll go 10 to 1. Geno Smith, Dak Prescott, Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers, okay. Trevor Lawrence, okay. Jalen Hurts, Lamar okay. Jackson, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Now, like I said, you can imagine the biggest problem I have here. And before I just go and start complaining about Aaron Rodgers being number eight and this and that, like, let's look at the other quarterbacks and understand. Now, I don't know where I'd put him exactly. I'd, I'd probably put him five or six Rodgers. Um, no, I'm not saying. I'd definitely put him in the top five. And here's why. The recency bias we have nowadays is actually ridiculous. And for some reason, we only apply it to certain quarterbacks and other ones just get a free pass. For example. Who's Aaron getting Rodgers, a free pass here, though? Who's getting a free pass here? Who's getting a free pass? Josh Allen is getting a free pass for leading. I'm sorry, but like leading the league in interceptions when Joe Burrow had a better season, went further in the playoffs and you keeping your number two spot. Free pass, I guess. Justin Herbert above Joe Burrow. Free pass. Because you know what people say about Justin Herbert? Oh, he's so talented. You could see the way he plays. He had no help last year. His receivers were hurt. His offensive line, blah, blah, blah. But Aaron Rodgers wins back-to-back MVPs, then loses his number one receiver, who, by the way, is the best receiver in the NFL. He leaves. The offensive line... Bakhtiari doesn't play the whole season, basically. The receivers around him are garbage. You have Romeo Dalbs and Christian Watson and Alan Lazard. Those are your three receivers. He has a bad season for his standards. Throws 27, 28 touchdowns, whatever he threw. Ended up throwing 10 or 11, 13. I don't remember how many picks he had exactly. 12, yeah. 12. Throws that many picks. His team misses the playoffs. And all of a sudden... Aaron Rodgers slips behind Trevor Lawrence, who, don't get me wrong, Trevor Lawrence had a good season last year. I think by the end of the year this year, he could be considered a top five quarterback in the NFL. But to put Trevor Lawrence above Aaron Rodgers, is it's just ridiculous. And Lamar also. I don't know why Lamar's on this. I just don't understand why we, because of the age that Rodgers is, and yeah, sure. It's probably that. Like I think that probably has something to do with it. And listen, I can look at it objectively, and I can tell you, yeah, Rodgers didn't really have much help last season. I also think the thumb injury had a big time effect on you know him having again a down season for his standards. But I think the age also really has something to do with it. You know, if we're it, it depends on what kind of list it is, because if we're you know headed if it's just based on what happened last season, or if we're also adding what we believe is going to happen coming into this season, like. I understand why Trevor Lawrence could be ahead of him. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to, you know, like you mentioned, has a chance to be top five. I think he I think he is going to kind of solidify himself into the top five of quarterbacks after this season. I just think there's no reason when you look at the years that these guys have at, at the year that Roger had last year and you look at what his situation was in this and that, I think there's no reason why it's how do I rephrase this I'm like you're doing a double negative right now I think that saying Rodgers is gonna have a good year and hasn't lost a step I don't think that's a bad thing to say when you consider all the factors from last year I agree with you like I would say Rodgers is around five or six I'd have to you know make a list and really go through it I'd say Rodgers probably five or six on my list as well but um, I I don't know. Like I've I'll seen tell you, some, the only four, I've seen some crazy ones. I put four, maybe five guys over Rodgers: Mahomes, Josh Allen, just uh, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and then the last one I'd maybe put over Rodgers is Herbert. I was just looking at Herbert's stats last season, and you know me, biggest Herbert guy on planet Earth. Yeah. Very yeah, underwhelming. He, he gets a pass, though. but very underwhelming. 
Plus well, I mean, he's, he's probably, he's probably gets a pass because he's how old is he? Young. Yeah, he's young. It's okay. He's young. Twenty five years old. Yeah. No, I was saying when I said the age thing, I wasn't saying oh they're projecting Rogers going to fall off in this. I'm saying that we still don't know about these guys. They're young. They're exciting. We think they're great. They could be really good. Rogers. Oh, he's been in the league forever. He hasn't won a Super Bowl in ten years. This and that. He had a bad year. Let's kick him to the curb. That's what it is. Sorry, right. that's what it is. Hold on one second, because you want to talk about quarterback rankings. Chris Sims did his quarterback rankings, and I thought you'd have a serious problem with a couple of things. I didn't even see this. So I'm sure I will. All right, I'm going to give you the top 15, okay? I'm just going to run through it, okay? Number 15, Geno Smith. 14, Russell Wilson. 13, Dak Prescott. 12, Kirk Cousins. 11, Daniel Jones. 10, Matt Stafford. Nine to Sean Watson, eight Aaron Rodgers, seven, a guy we didn't even mention, Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, six, Lamar Jackson, five, mm-hmm. Justin Herbert, four, Josh Allen, three, Burrow, two, Mahomes, one. Did you mention? Sorry, can you? Can I just talked about Hurts for no, like sorry. a minute? Thanks for no. paying attention. Um, yeah. Can you read like 11 to eight again? What was that? Daniel Jones. 11, Matt Stafford, 10, Deshaun Watson, 9, oh Aaron Rodgers, 8. I'll tell you what my biggest problem is with that. <laughs> it's not Aaron Rodgers. Where the hell is Jared Goff? You want to say all this stuff about these guys? Daniel Jones has a great year last year. Matt Stafford gets a pass for being hurt. You know, I mean, he was hurt, but he gets a pass. Deshaun Watson's awful when he comes back. Didn't do anything last year. Goff 17. Jared Goff has a great season last year. Top 10 stats wise last year. And you don't put him over guys like Kirk Cousins and Daniel Jones and Stafford. You're probably right about joke. that. What a joke. Tua Tagovailoa 21. Where was Lawrence on that? Lawrence is six ahead of Hertz. Oh my Which God. that was... That was the what? main thing a lot of people had. That that was the main problem a lot of people had was Lawrence over her. Nobody's the problem with Daniel Jones is eleven. He made some really great points about Daniel Jones. Okay. I do sure. have to say, yes, he hands the ball off very well and throws great slant routes. All right, let's move on before you get all riled up. I actually thought of a point about how great Daniel Jones is going to be this year, but we'll just save it for projections please, of the NFL please, season. Please save it and never use it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, oh, don't it's gonna die. be a great year. It's gonna be a great year for these G men. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on here. Um, a little baseball action. You have a question for me, and you teased it on the phone at around five o'clock today. Are you Are you sure you don't want to get to the biggest story in in America right now? You know what? You want to make fun of Mets Braves, okay? Are you sure, people it's, are talking about Mets Braves. It's on the front paper of the of the Wall Street Journal right now, okay? You no, sure? it, it's been the back page of the New York, the New York Post, and, and the Daily News the past two days. Yeah, it has New been. York. We live in New York. Yeah, the biggest media outlet in the world. Oh my god! You think people get the New York Post in like Florida? No, people are reading the New York Post online in Florida. Yes, they are. What is so difficult about that? Just I, I don't. Two of the biggest beat reporters uh, in baseball work for the New York Post. The people that break news in the sport work for the New York Post. You said to me before we recorded <laughs> that the Mets are the biggest story in baseball. There the is Mets, a man hitting Mets. 400 in June. But the Mets are the biggest story in baseball right now. Mets Braves for the beginning of this week from Monday to Wednesday, Monday to Thursday, or Tuesday to Thursday, I should say, is when the series started, have right. been the biggest topic right. of baseball. Right. Yes, they have been. Okay. Okay. The third place 30 and 32 Mets have been a huge story chasing down the Braves. They're not chasing down the Braves. I think that's pretty yeah, they're clear not. Exactly. they're not doing that. Not a single game is on national television. None of that. Oh, yeah, because they weren't on TBS on Tuesday and MLB Network on Wednesday. Yeah, mm. they were on national TV. They were on national TV. I didn't know that. But who gives a crap anyways? Freaking Mets Braves. Enough. Yeah. Yes. Yankees, Red Sox. But, yes, I did pose you the question. Yeah, I want to hear it. But the, If you bat yell. 400, if you're Luis or I, obviously, as we're talking about, if you bat 400, do you automatically win the MVP? No. 
I was hoping you'd say yes to create some sort of argument, but like, yeah, I'm also saying no. Yeah, you know, I'm not a batting average guy anymore. I don't, I, I, I try and, you know, I mean, preach listen, to others that batting average is completely useless. I think, I think what gets lost in translation when you're talking about batting average and how it's less of a significant stat is nobody's saying, like, oh my God, Luis arrived batting 400. Who gives a crap? He's trash. Like, nobody is saying that. If Luis no. arrives, is bad. We're just saying, I'd rather take a guy like an Aaron Judge or, you know, a Ronald Acuna. We're talking about the NL. Ronald Acuna, guy was batting, you know, 320. Or I'm not, I won't even mention the batting average because I'm, I'm arguing against him. A guy who's going to hit 30 homers, steal 40 bases, and end up with an OPS over 1,000 or, you know, high 900s and, and have the, these crazy war numbers and this and that. Luis Arise, if he bats 400, is an amazing season. And his OPS right now is in the 950s or 940s. Fantastic. Yep. Would love to have that guy on my team, but he's got one home run. War numbers aren't that great. Not really a stolen base guy. So very impressive. But when we're talking about most valued to their team, like it's not an automatic that he's he should win the MVP. Definitely a remarkable feat, but no, not at all. It's very impressive, though. I don't think he's gonna do it, although I would love it if he did. I don't it think, yeah, reason. it's so tough, man. Fantasy team wise. By the way, I didn't Great. even draft this guy. Well, I wanted to remember I wanted to draft him. Yes, and we went Vaughn Grissom, and then Vaughn Grissom gets sent down two days after the draft. Moral of the, the story. Braves. We ended up with Luis Arise. Listen and we to have me. Been very ha- <laughs> and we've been very happy with Luis Arise. Yes. Yes. And the I mean, listen, look at the fish. I mean, yeah. we'll talk about biggest stories in baseball. Like, you know, they're not the biggest story, but they're definitely you know, yeah. the, one of the more surprising teams at three games out of first place behind the Braves. I mean, that is pretty crazy. Yes, yes. And and like I said to you on the phone before, Alcantara's supposed to be their best pitcher. Not their best pitcher. Not their best pitcher. Their fifth best pitcher. Guys, a reigning Cy Young winner. And by the way, all those lot- guys, Wheeler, Burn. I mean, Wheeler almost threw a no hitter tonight, but Wheeler, Corbin Burns hasn't been himself exactly. So, and so what happens with pitchers? I was one of those people that, you know, disagreed with the trade. I was like, build your rotation up. You know, you have Pablo Lopez. He's a good starting pitcher. You know, continue to build around Alcantara on that rotation. I didn't really love the trade. And, well, it's pain, I'll eat my words. I'll eat my words there. I'll, I'll admit it. Yeah. Um, DeGrom. Yes. DeGrom, but before DeGrom. Because that's yeah. going to segue into our thing. Um, right. Yeah. We could go back to your Mets, your biggest story in baseball. Right. Wait. Yeah. Can I, know, I say something actually? I'm, okay. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Floor is yours. Wait. It's about it's about Mets Braves though. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna bring up Mets Braves. I'm I'm not a guy that roots for injury at all. I'll never root for injury seriously. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. I what? just have to say, round of applause to the Atlanta Brave fan base. Because you are truly the most classless fan base in sports. First off, you get away with the racist tomahawk chop for years. Oh, stop. You're going to pull that card now? And then All finally, right, yeah. and then, and then somebody Mr. Gets, Enlightened over here. And then somebody gets hurt on your field and you're cheering. Yeah, you got round of applause. Okay. You guys okay. are great. Agreed. Let me just, I agree with you. That's Thank messed you. up. Cheering yeah. for an injury, this that. That yeah. being said, let's Bad talk people. about your cornball first baseman yeah. who is just, I mean, the the cringiest of cringe to win a home run. By the way, great home run was a freaking bomb. It was a bomb. Great. Great job. Walk back to the dugout with your third place team, and you sit in the dugout, <laughs> and you go, from the dugout, big tough guy, you throw it again. Or again, like a little bitch. I don't care. Put the e on the episode. Like you a know, bitch. He puts but, like <laughs> what? what? You know, like when He's passionate. He's passionate. No, it's not that. It's really not that. Do you know, like if somebody's arguing and like, let's say you're making a fat joke, right? And I and I go, you know, say it again. Say it again. Like it's not like. He's not confrontational. What did, what did the Braves pitcher do? 
He threw him a slider that hung yeah, right over I'm the saying, plate. Like, like, did the bitty. Braves pitcher before he stepped in the batter's box be like, "Oh, I'm ready for you, man. I'm gonna strike you out." This oh yeah, we care. We care about the feelings of the pitcher of no, the Atlanta I'm saying, Braves. Nothing. Oh, you're just not getting. It. You said okay. You said if someone says a fat joke, then you like you. I'm not targeting you personally. Yeah, no. I'm just I use the example. Right. I'm just saying. You said, "Oh, say it again. Say it again." Nobody did anything to Pete Alonso to like antagonize him and get a reaction at him. He just hit a home run, went back to the dog and goes, throw it again, throw it again. I just think it For was no like reason. heat of the moment. Like He's so there's crazy. a hot mic. Heat of the moment, man. Third inning, regular season game, seven games back. Yeah, and you say that like as if yeah. First off, no, go ahead. Would Aaron it? Judge do anything like this remotely close to this? Who gives a rat's ass? I'm not complete. I'm not complete. No, I thought Aaron you were going to go. I thought you were. You sounded like you were going to go down the Yankee route. I'm not going down the Yankee route. You got to realize something. I'm not comparing the two franchises ever. I'm not going to compare these two franchises. I'm not going to compare Mr. I'm so perfect and straight hour and boring, Mr. Aaron Judge. Let me be the captain and be all, all this and almighty. I'm Aaron Judge. I'm not going to compare it. It's a different life, bro. We're, you know, we're we're not taking the high road. We're a bunch of mashers. We're fighting, you know? Even though this team doesn't really fight. They should have. They should have fought the other night. They should have started getting bats and balls and started uh, going to the stands. I could talk about the Mets with business. you all day, man. It's entertainment. It's great. It's no just... life. No life in that team. But anyway, like, you understand my point. Like, I'm not comparing Judge. Like, no, the, judge no. That's, the that. reason why I said that is because when I, when I was saying that stuff about Alonzo, you were about to make a point of, like, you know, to come back at me, and I thought you were going to say something like, if this is your team, or and bring up the Yankees. Because I was talking about you as a Mets fan. I thought you were going to bring up me as a Yankees fan. Like, I didn't care. You know, like, when I saw it, I was like, all right, like, cool. Like, he, he's talking trash, and I don't care. I just think if there was a hot, piece of crap. If there was a hot mic in every dugout, how, how much at least listen content are we? At least the up? guy does all this stupid stuff. Well, not all this stupid. You know, he's not. A, he doesn't get in trouble. And shit. I'm just saying, like every once in a while, he does this, this stupid crap. At least he performs. Unlike guy who talks a lot and is also fat, fatter than Pete Alonso. Oh wow, Alec Manoa. That's that's crazy. Playing in the Florida Complex League. I actually, the, sorry, Alec Manoa, if you're watching this, but I hate I, you. I actually just saw something like literally five minutes ago. The top five leaders in ERA last season, Major League Baseball, and you kind of mentioned it before with like the aces that are not performing well. Mm-hmm. Top five ERA are all like over four, four and over. Dylan pieces. Cease, you seen him? Yeah. Oh my God. Verlander sucked tonight. You know, it. It's 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 actually crazy what's going on with Manoa though. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of you're kind of at a loss for words. I, that's what I am. I mean, like yep. the Florida complex league, and yeah, you know, I think a lot of it is also them. And I mentioned this on the phone with you, them trying to get him to clear his head and like just yeah. completely start over. Yeah, definitely. But still, it's aggressive. How much do you think the weight like actually has an effect on this? I, How big I was know. he last season? <laughs> He was big. I, mean, I don't know if he's bigger now. He's definitely not smaller. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just, you know, facts. Like, he's definitely not smaller. Um, yeah. You know, I think that it's probably the pitch clock's got something to do with it. And it might, you know, the pitch clock may not be related to the weight. You know, it could just be he's, he's, not, guys. he's not in rhythm. But I think the weight's got, you know, something to do with it. I think a big guy like that moving around constantly being pressed up against the clock. I have a lot of a lot of pitchers this season, and you know, as a Mets fan, I, I think you see it with the two veteran guys. Yeah, you know, I, I think the the new rules are ab- absolutely affecting them. Yeah. So that's a good point there. Um, Manoa, my Blue Jays though, they're playing pretty good though. I mean, I'm calling them your Blue Jays. Oh my! Goodness. Outside of the division, they're very good, yeah. and then inside, they're terrible inside the, the AL East, yeah. which is just a gauntlet. Yeah. Uh, by the way. You know, Yankees right now, you know, with Judge out, they could use like this this an outfielder. I actually have a specific guy I think they can use. <laughs> Aaron Hicks, this guy Shut on the, up. This guy on the up. Orioles is, is mashing right now. No, we got your boy, Billy McKinney. 
Did he homer tonight? Yeah, no, he had a triple. Oh, no, I think he had a homer, too. Yeah, he homered in, in game two. Yeah. That's hot. Willie Billy Calhoun McKinney. actually, like, can hit, by the way. Willie Calhoun? Yeah. Jake Bowers, too. Like, we're we're good. We don't need Judge. Again, Cashman will just find these diamonds in the rust. Jake yeah. Bowers is this year's yeah, let's go. diamond in the rust. You know, before we get to DeGrom, I was doing a, a Sporkle quiz today. Yeah. And it was... Can you name the Mets opening day lineups from like 2010 to 2019? <laughs> and I'm like ripping these names and I'm like, for, I'm like, what? The, I can't remember some of these. I guess Kirk knew an ice. He wasn't in any of them. I was so disappointed. I was so, like, tough. so excited when I guessed it. You would be very impressed with some of these names I got. Really? Not holy John Buck. Uh, who else Christ. did I get? Some crazy stuff. But um, I'm, st- I'm hung up on center fielders i'm like who the hell was the met center field like before nimmo i just couldn't remember juan lagares man elite juan lagares oh wilmer flores was one i, I forgot juan lagares wilmer flores and another one but there was wilmer there i don't know but there were some crazy guys i Did got you get neil walker that was a 2016 throwback uh, i don't i think he was another guy i didn't remember i ended up getting like an 80 on it or like a 85 that's I impressive good. You should send it, send it. If you can still get it, send it to me. I'll try. I, I, don't do think, I don't even think I'll do as good as you did. Okay. We'll but, um, oh, Kevin Ploiecki was a poll I had. Oh, that's nice. Kevin Ploiecki. Right. Yeah. All right. The I miss Ploiecki. Speaking yeah. of your pets, you know. Jake DeGrom. By the way, just another, like, if the Mets, it, the Mets just can put, like, a tip in their cap for one thing, like, the past, like, two years, okay? And that's passing on Kumar Rocker. Yep. Passing on Correa as of right now. Yes. And passing on Jacob DeGrom. Because two of those guys now in the Rangers organization, and Correa has been off to a miserable start and he's been on the IL and banged up. But the Rangers took Kumar Rocker early in the draft uh, this past year. He's having Tommy John. And now DeGrom, it's it's actually sad with DeGrom. It's, we're yeah. we're gonna we're gonna talk about what ifs and you know, like players that you know, injuries or something else happened, like what they could have been. Like I, if Degrom never dealt with injury, like I seriously think, like we were dealing with one of the five best pitchers of all time. Yeah, and you know, I saw a tweet today, and it was like, if this is it for Degrom, or you know, if he doesn't really have much left, like, is he a Hall of Famer? And I was like, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. And then I look at his numbers, I'm like, oh my god, he's not a Hall of Famer. Like he it's... just doesn't. He's got two Cy Youngs. I think he's only made four all-star T and I know all-stars is by no means an end all be all thing when it comes to hall of fame, you know, resumes, but right. He's only pitched about 210, 20 games, something like that. And he just hasn't put together enough great seasons. I mean, pitcher war isn't as important as hitter war, but he's only got like 40 something pitcher war. And usually the number is about 60 to, for, to be considered for the hall of fame. I mean, it's not a set in stone rule. It's more of a, you know, hypothetical, but he's not a Hall of Famer as of right now. He's still yeah. got some more things to do. He could have been exactly what Verlander and Kershaw are going to be looked at it by the end of their career. I mean, if you if take... not better than Verlander, maybe not Kershaw. I think Kershaw is the better out of those two. If you just take... Take 2018, the first Cy Young, 2019, and then combine 20, which was, you know, the shortened season, 21, which he pitched half, and 22, which he pitched like a quarter of. Yeah, what's his ERA? Like one something? His ERA in that span is 2.05. He has a 193 ERA plus. His FIP is 2.14. What's his strikeouts? 876 strikeouts and 645 innings. Yeah, see, that's crazy. And he's like the all-time strikeout to walk ratio leader. Yeah, it's it is um it's really sad. Like it, it genuinely is sad. And I yeah. saw you know Meth fans celebrating that, and you know of course the next day Pete Alonso was in hand. But like, how do you celebrate injury? Like, it doesn't matter, you know, because he left, and it was you know it was it was upsetting that he left. But at the same time, you know, giving a guy like this five years is incredibly risky. And I'm reading now the Rangers, this contract's not insured. Like, you have to get a lot of these contracts insured. This contract is not insured. 
Oh, well, I didn't even know is, contracts need to be. I just thought they were all like automatically insured. I didn't know you like need to get insurance for each. Wow, that's you need to get insurance. You you are recommended insurance, for, especially for long term deals. It's the reason why Correa is not a Met. The insurance company would not give the okay. That's that's the reason why he's not a Met. That's bad. That's so really- this contract is either not insured or it's just it's real sketchy the way yep. it is because they were not signing off on this. No. And five, five years, years is a guy. long time. Yeah. So as a Mets fan, it's like the only thing you're like kind of like happy about is you're just relieved that it's not your problem. Exactly. It's like, wow, it's not your problem. Yeah. But to speak, the Rangers are having an excellent season. They're going to go into Tampa Bay this weekend, and these are arguably the two best teams in baseball. Yep. And by run differential, the Rangers are better. They score a crap ton of runs. Yep. They've gotten Corey Seager back and healthy now for a few weeks. He's been very good. Mm-hmm. So, and Nathan Avaldi has stepped up and been an ace been for this. Great. You know, they say he's like the best teammate. You see that thing that the Rangers- do they really? I didn't know yeah, that. They, apparently, he's a great dude too. Good for him. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens, but this is a team that I want. Go at, go add at the deadline. Go add a front line starting yep. pitcher, or you know, go replace the Grom and and go on a run here. I'm excited for this uh, what ifs thing. I got a lot of good ones. I got a lot of baseball. I got like three for each sport. All right, I I got a few baseball, like the obvious ones. I don't think of a couple of other ones. You want to start biggest what ifs in sports player rights? Because when you think of what ifs, like you could also go back and like team wise, like manager decisions. If this yeah. went the one way, but we're we're gonna do you know like the biggest Careers. what ifs. Like if, this, if this guy didn't get uh, hurt or this didn't right. happen, so what, um, all right. So what are we I'll list you off. I got three for each sport. I'll get you. Okay. I'll get you. I'll give you one. I like in baseball. I all hope right. that. We're probably going to have, I would imagine. We're going to have similar. We're going to have similar. So I think number one, the one that sticks out to mind, the most obvious one is Tulowitzki. I think that he, and we're not, I'm not even going to include DeGrom. Obviously he was the like poster boy. Yeah. This. I'm not even going to bother. Um, Troy Tulowitzki was just every single year. Like, yep, this guy's like, incredible shortstop and i know he played in course field so yeah his numbers were inflated and this and that but like he went to toronto and ended up hitting 25 home runs towards the end of his career and you know putting up an 800 ops anyway he's a great player yeah um really five tool guy amazing player and he was well on his way to being one of the best shortstops of all time like when you look back at some of these shortstops of all like who have ever played this game he could have easily thrown his name into that list. He played 1300 games, a little, a dip under 1300 games in 13, in 13 seasons. Yeah. The guy's averaging less than a hundred games a year. You know, he's in a span of 2009 to 2014. He batted 309, hit 143 homers, which if you, Average that out to 162 games and times that by how many seasons that was. That's a 30, it's a 34 home run per season average with a 930, 938 OPS, 137 OPS plus, won a couple gold gloves. Guy had 44.5 war in, in 1300 games. Like, great player. Just super sad. What if? Yeah. Might you know, still be playing. He's 38. He could have still been playing if he never got hurt. I didn't even think of him, which is kind of weird. I mean, look, like, you know, we think – I don't want to compare Jeter here because completely different circumstances, and Jeter's a very clutch player and had a lot of success in this and that, but Jeter played 2,800 games, so double his games, and yeah. he had 71 war. Total he had 44, you know? That's nuts. Yep. I think an obvious one, you know, you mentioned Tulitsky, and yeah, I mean, like when you think about it, a hundred percent. I thought you were going Jose Fernandez. Oh God, yeah. Because I this, didn't want to <laughs> you don't want to go I didn't uh, want to go to the death route, but yeah, that is like definitely no, you're right. I did I mean it fits the criteria. Correct. That was the first guy I thought of because yeah. 
Yeah, he would have he, been. He, he was really – he. I'm going to pull up his baseball reference page right now. But it was a spectacle every single night this guy took the mound. I mean, we talk about those strikeout numbers for DeGrom. That's Jose That's Fernandez like, was doing that, too. Yeah. I mean, he was unreal. And he could hit, which was even more entertaining. But yeah, these, these freaking numbers, man. In 2016, his last season – 286 ERA, 16 and 8, 182 innings, 253 strikeouts. <sighs> Strikeout per nine, 12.5 led the league that year. That's crazy. That's actually insane. He was uh he was real special. And another guy, very quickly, um, pitcher wise, Matt Harvey. Yeah. Thought about him. Matt Harvey, same thing. Every night he took the mound. It was a spectacle. Definitely. Uh, Took the league, took you know the league by storm when he came up. Then he has Tommy John. He comes back. He's really good. And then that 2016 season, he had the thoracic. He needed the thoracic outlet surgery. Never came back. But I mean, he was you know, I mean, again, when you talk about those teams that had Degrom and Syndergaard on them and Mats and it's all those guys could be on this list. Crazy Wheeler. It's it's like That's Wheeler. Yeah, he was the, the number one guy. Harvey was considered the number one guy. So. Yep. Over two guys that are arguably the best pitchers in in baseball yep. and Wheeler and DeGrom. So that's crazy. By the way, Syndergaard, man. It, I mean, I know it's kind of a little off topic. Not really, though. He could be a what if. How bad? He has a seven ERA right now. Yeah. Like, that yeah. is absolutely nuts. Let's go. Um, give me, give me let's, you want to switch sports here. Let's, let's, well, let's, no, uh, I got two more baseball ones, then we'll switch sports. All right. All right. And they both ended up to play for the same teams. Um, Not together. This one, I think, might be a little surprising. You might not have thought about this, but it makes yeah. complete sense. Ken Griffey Jr. for me. I just thought about it. What yep. ifs? Like, I don't understand when we look at the all-time home run list and Ken Griffey Jr. is on it with 630 or however many home runs he has. And I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't people say, like, Griffey didn't? He got hurt a lot and this and that. I'm like, how does he have 630 home runs? Ken Griffey Jr., if he stayed healthy when he left Seattle and went to Cincinnati, he played, let's see, this is in this is from age 31 to age 34, 111 games, 70 games, 53 games, 83 games. If he would have played fully healthy in Cincinnati, not fully healthy, but you know, Averaging 130 to 40 games a year in Cincinnati, I really don't think it's crazy to say that this guy could have hit 800 home runs. He would have been like, I think he would, on arguably the greatest leg- player of all time. He would legitimately have a shot at being like one of the great, one of if the, he already is one of the greatest players of all time, but the greatest player of all time, close. I probably he probably wouldn't get, it, but he'd be close. And yeah, he'd probably be the home run king if he hit 800. Well, no, obviously, if he hit 800, he'd be the home run king. No, if he hit 800, like, I don't think there'd be any doubt of who the greatest player of all time was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it'd be, like, the one sport where yeah. you're like, He's... this is the greatest player of all time. Yeah. Probably. The guy came up when he was 19. No, it's it's nuts. No, I um, thought about it, you know, because it's he's obviously already considered, like you mentioned, the one of the greatest players of all time, but it's a big what if. I mean, Ellsbury. Just think, yeah, Ellsbury's one. Just think about this: two hundred and forty-nine home runs for him from nineteen ninety-six to th- to two thousand, age twenty-six to thirty. That's fifty home runs a year, right? And then he hits twenty-two, eight, thirteen, twenty. He gets hurt, you know, he gets hurt, and then he gets healthy again. One hundred twenty games hits thirty-five. Like he was, yeah, I think he oh, could. Right. He he literally could have hit eight hundred home runs. All yeah. right, now my last baseball one. Not injuries, but some other things. What if signings? What if other problems? I got Robinson Cano on my biggest what ifs list. Yeah. Robinson Cano, he's not going to be a Hall of Famer, by the way. He's got the PD stuff. Yeah. That's a problem. They're not going to let him in. If he stayed away from the PEDs, and the biggest thing I think, if he would have stayed in New York, because I'm sorry, like, I'm not being Homer Yankee fan here. We're talking about Derek Jeter, and I agree where Derek Jeter is a little overrated. Like, people say he's one of the best players to play this game or the best shortstop of all time. It's not true. But being a Yankee, 
help all that championships, all that help that, you know, they always say winning, you know, it, there's no better place to win than in New York. So right. Robinson Cano, if he would have stayed in New York, he was already an MVP candidate every year playing a premium, a, a position where offense is a premium at second base. It's I a good think one. that's a huge what if. Like, could have been one of the Yankee greats. Yeah. And a baseball great. That's not uh, a bad one. I like that one. All right, let's move on here from baseball. There's a ton in baseball. Uh, but let's move on here to a little basketball. What, what are we what are we thinking? Biggest what ifs in right. NBA. Right? I or think college. There's not there's really like no other way to go to start. Most obvious one, I think, in maybe all the sports, it's D Rose, right? Like, you know, do we, yeah, he's he's like the chalk answer guy wins the MVP, just incredible. Thought he's gonna be have an amazing career, and you know, who knows what championships he could have won in Chicago and this and that, and just awful knee injuries just completely destroy his career. So, yeah, D Rose, you got any? Um, in the NBA, I think we're seeing one right now. I think Zion. Oh. I th- I th- I think like it's Zion. A little... I was gonna little say. I literally... All right. So in my notes, I didn't put Zion, but I have in parentheses. I said John ja Morant might be on this list someday. LOL. Yeah. Like, literally, that's a possibility. And another current guy we we're talking about it before. Like, he's gonna be a Hall of Famer, but Kyrie. Kind of going back to the Robinson Cano talk before, like if he didn't go mental and do all this stuff, like maybe he consider him Cleveland. I know he wasn't going too like he was still sane when he w- went to Boston, but what if he stayed in Cleveland? What if it, it worked in Brooklyn? Like there's a ton of what he's just been kind of bouncing around now. Where this guy, if he was on a team consistently, he could have had you know. Four rings by now. It's five thousand different what ifs with Kyrie. Whether it's it's a you know the team working ifs. out or just himself and his career. Yep. Yeah. What about? <laughs> excuse me, Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball. Yep. I mean, I mean yes. I thought about, about him. I, just, I thought about him. The only reason I didn't put him on the list is because, like, what was Lonzo Ball going to be? Yeah, like, he would be a, a good player or a good role player, whatever he'd be. You know, good starting caliber point guard, but. He wouldn't be an all star. He wouldn't be all. I, I got a great one. Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, he's dealt with a ton of injuries. I mean, yes, past two or three years. Another guy up. gonna be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, but exactly like it's almost like the Ken Griffey kind of well, right. Comparison. But how good could he have been? Could have he been a top ten player of all time? Because I, I mean, his resume is be. ridiculous. He's got multiple Finals MVPs with two different teams. He's got yeah. multiple championships, Defensive Player of the Year. He's got everything you really is except an MVP. Um, the other two guys I put, Brandon Roy was a guy that could have been amazing. Got yeah, hurt, ended up having to retire way too early. And then another guy who was a Portland Trail Trailblazer was one of the biggest busts of all time, Greg Oden. Yep, that's. Yeah, when you think NBA draft busts, he comes to mind immediately. But not for the, you know, you got guys like Anthony Bennett who just suck. Yeah. Kel Fultz. But Greg Oden could have been a good player. Yeah. Any uh, more here or we got you want to go to football? That quick? was all I had for uh, NBA. <sighs> Football's tough because, like, there's the obvious one in Josh Gordon, right? Everybody brings up Josh put, Gordon. Yeah, I put Josh Gordon. What if, you know, he, you know, stayed off the weed? as Mr. Stephen right. A. Smith likes to say. But you got any, like, crazy ones here? So I wrote, like, five down. One of them that I was like, this is the least because this guy's – well, not the least, but I put OBJ. For the I was the, that was the number one guy I was thinking of. Yeah, I put OBJ because, I mean, is he, another guy, is he a Hall of Famer? Probably not. I wouldn't vote him into the Hall of Fame. Pretty just damn close to it. Just didn't do it for long enough, I think. Um, and I mean, he's still a good player. You know, we'll see what he does in Baltimore. But I'm, you know, he's never gotten back to that form he had with the Giants. No. Um. So he's a huge what if. I also had, um. Bo Jackson. 
I think was a huge what if for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and it's not, you know, it's not a bad what if. The guy had a hell of a career in baseball too, an all star. And, right. But they literally, you know, say that Bo Jackson is one of the greatest athletes of all time. And if he would have stayed in football, I would have loved to see how he would have ended up as a Raider or wherever the hell he could have gone. Yeah. Um, and you then made two- me th- you made me think of one with that Calvin, Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, chalk. Yes. But- I mean, I think, yeah, he, he could have ended up the greatest receiver of all time. Like no questions asked. And now it's like, you know, it's a debate and I don't yeah. really know how many people would even put him on. Right. I put him. I mean, he's definitely top five. I think he's three in my opinion. Third I best think he's over T.O. I think he's three. I think he's it's R- R- Moss and Rice, probably Rice one, Moss two, then him. Um, two more. Big guy, I think you're forgetting right now. One of the biggest what ifs in NFL history. Obviously, I'm gonna say right now, RG three. I mean, yeah. Come on, he was fantastic his rookie year. Merlo, dude, he was gonna be like. Yeah. Really all right. Good. Yes. I, 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 I get it. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Especially for that franchise that's been starving to be successful in, in recent history, you know, since the eighties. Um, and Andrew Luck. I, I Luck's think, Luck's the guy for me. I think, you know, he was already elite. He could have ended up as a, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Top 10. I think he, if Andrew Luck played out his career, he could have been a top 10 quarterback of all time. He's throwing, he threw 40 touchdowns like multiple times and he was getting better and never really had that, oh my God, team or receiver. Like T.Y. Hilton was his number one receiver. Peyton right. Manning had Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne. T.Y. Hilton is not Marvin Harrison. Lux, Lux, the like the number one guy. Yeah, Lux, the number one guy you think of when you have this conversation. One hundred percent. RG three. That was fun. I remember, I remember that RG three. That was crazy. I literally remember watching that game against Seattle. That playoff game. This is a little twelve year old boy. Top of my head. Any defensive guys? I mean, we. I Sean Taylor. I thought about, but like I said, I didn't want to. Yeah. Go the death route. Trying to think quick. Defensive people, I, I really can't. But yeah, that was a good discussion. Big cor- oh, uh, mm, no, never mind. Yeah, no. I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's plenty of like, I'm trying to think like defensive ends, like big sack guys. Even JJ Watt, he to a certain extent could have yeah. been stayed a little, stayed a little bit more healthier. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Orlando Rossi just tied the game with the game tying homer in the ninth against Robertson. So, oh my god, and I got to deal with this the rest of the night. I mean, it's just, oh god, I'm gonna put it on while I'm editing this. Be uh, great. You know what? It's like, yeah, and I'm good with the season. Yeah, know? I'm good, but yeah. right now, just being done. Biggest story in baseball. <laughs> yeah, if they lose the game, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Cun- Cunha's gonna walk it off. It's whatever. Yeah. You'll be all right. right. Um, that'll do it here for 98. Great episode. Um, NBA finals, obviously, uh, Stanley cup finals. If that's your cup of tea, enjoy, mm-hmm. uh, enjoy the weekend. And, uh, you know, for us, we'll inch closer to football season and yes. Belmont. Get the... you got a pick. I don't have a pick. Uh, no, you want to go? go? Oh, I, you're, you're working. I know I'm working. I don't want, I don't want to go. I don't know if I want to go. go it's the day. Whatever. Me sitting drinking and gambling all day. I mean, it's exactly what I want to do, but you know, right. gotta be responsible. Yeah. All right, we'll talk to you guys next time.